Hello everybody and welcome to the table. Today we're taking a look at the CRKT Sabenza. And yes, I said Sabenza. So I love having knives that have something of a storied past, some history to them. And so this one right here is kind of loaded with that. So let me kind of explain this knife as we check it out. But the CRKT Sabenza here was meant to be a collaboration between Chris Reeve Knives and CRKT, Columbia River Knife and Tool. So what we ended up with here though are just a handful of these dealer sample knives, these prototype knives that were really never meant for the general public and some of them are just kind of out in the wild. So I picked this one up just because I kind of love the storied past behind it and as a curio, as a collectible, I think it's really top notch. Um, but as a knife, we can check it out too as well. So first off, as a pocket knife, what do we have right here? So first off, we can see these plastic scales and yes, I said plastic, plastic scales, a plastic frame lock, and I say plastic, but I think the official uh, material is Zytel, so I'll say Zytel frame lock. Um, but again, that's a very uncommon combination there to use Zytel plastic on a frame lock design. So very, very odd choice by CRKT here. Um, and the blade itself, love the blade shape, of course, classic Sabenza. And this is an AUS-6 steel. And so for the mid-90s when this knife was produced, that was a pretty common production steel, very commonly used by CRKT on a lot of their models for that period. So it, again, today it's not going to be anything to write home about, but it is what it is, a budget steel for what was meant to be a very budget knife. So again, being a collaboration between Chris Reeve Knives and CRKT, the idea was, I believe, to bring the Sabenza style and design at a much lower price point that anyone could afford. And CRKT totally dropped the ball on this on this knife. And from the plastic frame lock design to the blade steel, there's, there's a lot wrong here. But um, as a pocket knife, let's sh check out the dimensions really quickly. We can see size wise, it's pretty similar to your standard Sabenza. We have about a three and a half inch blade and an overall blade length, overall length of about eight and a half inches. And I guess one of the positive things, one of the upsides of having a plastic frame is that it's gonna be a pretty lightweight knife. So let's check out the weight of the CRKT Sabenza. We are coming in right at 2.6 ounces. So 2.6 ounces is actually pretty nice for a knife that is essentially what I would call full sized. So we get that three and a half inch blade, frame lock design. We have the very uh, Chris Reeve style pocket clip right here. So what again went wrong here? So CRKT was so confident in their collaboration with Chris Reeves. You know, they had a run of these knives produced like this one right here, and they sent them all, all to all their dealers um, at the time just to try and drum up interest in the knife. And at the time there was quite a lot of interest in the fact that we were gonna get a production Sabenza. Um, but essentially what happened is once Chris Reeve himself saw what they had produced, you know, he, you know, so, you know, pulled the plug, so to speak, on the whole project. And so as a result, this never went into full production. And the only knives from this run that exist are part of this initial run that was meant for dealer um, use only. And so a lot of them have found their way into private collections. And this one, again, I found and I decided to pick it up. Uh, just for the collectability aspect of it, the fact that it's it's a really cool looking knife, of course, not the kind of knife you're going to put in your pocket and actually carry every day. Um, that would be very impractical and kind of silly <laughs> to, th to think of it like that. Um, but as a collector's piece, absolutely. Why not? I mean, first off, let's look at the blade. Again, I said AUS-6 steel, so it's very scratch prone, but this one is still in light new condition. We can see the nice um, satin finish on there. Uh, we have the single thumb stud right here pressed in on this side right here. We just have the model number would have been the 6513. And these were made overseas. So this, this was made in Taiwan. And again, CRKT, you know, very commonly at the time used Taiwan for a lot of their production. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, the weird thing, though, look at the font on the Sabenza. I mean, even the actual Sabenza, I don't think they say Sabenza on the knife. But we have it here written on the blade. Weird oddball font. I mean, we can see the S, E, B, E are kind of like a smaller size than the NZA. So I don't know what they were going for here. Like the NZA look extra fat and wide. No idea why they went that way. It's just, it just seems like an odd choice. Looks very um, 
I don't know, amateurish, if anything, like they shouldn't have done it that way, you know? Um, but again, right here on the handle, we have that old vintage CRKT logo. So that looks good. And again, the entire handle shape is based on the Sebenza. So it looks good. The, the knife overall, the shape feels good in hand. It looks good because um, it's based on a very, you know, time tested design. And uh, again, being a production knife, they opted to put these serrations right here. So we have very, you know, very much production style serrations. And I will say, being the fact that this is a knife that has not really been used, this blade is razor sharp. So, you know, as I, as I received it, I don't think it's ever been sharpened. So this is still the original factory edge on the serrations and the plain edge portion of the blade. On the back here, we have a fully enclosed design. And what's really weird again, a lot of things are weird about this knife. The actual, there's no stop pin in this knife. The blade, you can see it just rests up against this back spacer. And that is what prevents your knife from opening <laughs> too far, which is really odd. Um, same thing with our plastic frame lock right here. You can see it does have some tension to it. And most of that is provided by this pocket clip. So that pocket clip is pushing down and keeping that plastic lock bar in place. So again, really, really weird. There is a small little insert. You can see this little square right there. So there's an insert on the plastic lock bar and there is a piece of metal in there. So the actual contact with the blade, with the tang, is a piece of metal that's put into this plastic. So at least they thought that far ahead and put some metal into that frame for durability's sake. Um, but I mean, in terms of long-term durability, how long is a plastic, a Zytel lock bar going to really hold up if you actually bought this knife in the 90s with the intention of actually using it? I mean, how would have that held up? And I think the answer to that is how many plastic frame locks do we see today? The answer is really none. So I think this was kind of part of the failed experiment. Um, but I mean, design-wise, again, everything else looks very Sebenza-like, looks good. Pocket clip looks fairly Sebenza-like as well. Um, carries just fine. Feels pretty pretty nice. There's a good amount of tension on there because again, that's what's keeping that frame lock working. Um, the whole, whole enclosed design is kind of an interesting choice, but again, needed for the design. But really interesting. Plastic handle, not quite the knife you're gonna flick out. You know, it doesn't really come out super, oh, I was able to do it. So it doesn't really come out super smoothly. Um, there is a detent on the blade, so the blade doesn't just flop out of the handle. It feels pretty solid in there, so that is kind of cool. But in terms of just, all, what a weird knife. <laughs> this is one of those ones I picked up just to have in the collection. So weird. Um, let me give you a quick size comparison. So right here we have the Benchmade Bug Out, um, a little bit smaller. Both really lightweight knives, actually. But you can see the, the Bug Out is definitely going to be a little bit smaller than this. Um, I also have this other knife. This is just some gas station knife I picked up. And you can see in terms of size, it's bigger than the Sebenza. So just some size comparisons on the table right there. You get an idea of what you're working with. Um, but really, this is just a cool knife. I mean, not as a knife, but really just as the, the story behind it, the collectability aspect of it. Um, I would never recommend anyone go buy this knife for the sake of having it to use as a knife. But to put it on the shelf and collect, I think that's really where the value comes. Because there's only, what, 100 or so of these things out there. Um, from the research I did, there weren't many of these made. And so the fact that for that alone um, gives it some cool, like, cool collectible value. Um, so if you see one for cheap, definitely pick it up to buy it for that sake. But not as something that you'd really want to use. You know, a lot of cool things about this knife. Um, but the fact that it it would be a usable knife is not one of those things. So if you have any questions, drop a comment below. I love having conversation pieces like this. They're just cool. You know, as, as a knife shaped object, I guess you can call it. Um, I love the collectability aspect. So hope you all have a knife day out there. Again, drop any comments and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.